Good morning, good evening, wherever you are across the world and the universe. Welcome to my Quantum Living Podcast at the intersection of science and spirituality. I'm your host, Anna Anderson, quantum teacher, intuitive guide, and above all, an inquisitive soul. This podcast is about how we can bring the various spiritual, metaphysical, and esoteric concepts and ideas validated by quantum physics and modern cosmology to the very practical level to improve and enrich our life experience as individuals, communities, and the humankind. Whether you are listening to this show while driving or commuting, doing chores around the house, relaxing on a couch, or flying in a spaceship across the galaxy, I hope you'll enjoy today's episode. Okay, let's begin. Hello and welcome back to Quantum Living and to my new mini-series Quantum Chat, microdosing spiritual insights in a food-for-thought style, where in each episode, together with my special and returning guest, Marin Muta, we focus on just one topic, one burning question, one quantum mystery that probably everyone has a view on, but no real answer to, as we can only speculate and guess, which is fun. Hi, Maren. Thanks for joining me yet again for another exciting quantum chat. Hi, Anna. Thank you for having me. <laughs> What's in store today? Okay. Today's question is, who or what are angels? Okay. This is another big one with several different explanations, most coming from various spiritual teachings, obviously. Most commonly, angels are perceived as the messengers of God, the creator, our guardians, guides, and protectors, as spiritual beings residing in the highest planes of existence that can manipulate space and time in our physical reality, give us guidance and warnings, and communicate with us. And how many angels are there? <laughs> That's another interesting question. As apart from the key archangels, whose names and roles most people are familiar with, there is a myriad of other lower hierarchy, so to speak, angels, and pretty much there is an angel for everything under the sun that we can call upon in the hour of need. There is also a view that angels are beings from other planets, universes, and dimensions, with powers far beyond the human powers just like the various extraterrestrials visiting the Earth thousands of years ago were perceived as gods descending from the sky. In my recent interview with Kedrick Olsen, Multidimensional Self, he proposes that angels are aggregors, which are thought forms created by the collective consciousness who adopt the roles we want them to have. He then really goes out on a limb <laughs> by claiming that angels are not those spiritual, positive, helpful beings with wings as portrayed by modern religions and the New Age movement, but in fact, he points out the Old Testament, which depicts angels as negative, destructive beings that kill people. Intuitively, I feel that angels are high-frequency spiritual beings whose role is to bridge the physical with the higher dimensions by balancing the flow of energy between them. This involves communication, help and guidance offered to the souls in the human form to assist them on their journey. What do you think? Oh boy, this is a beautiful topic, actually. Um, my explanation is very simple, and that is that the angels are the music notes of the symphony. And that's why we can have, you know, different forms of after-death communications or communications from beyond. Because we're playing out everything, <laughs> and I won't get into that subject too soon, we don't need to have warnings and we don't need to have basic guidance. If you're getting guidance or if you're getting intuitive warnings, that's your intuition. That's your consciousness saying, hey, something major is probably going to happen with this choice. But anyway, if you're getting information that has to do with your life and how your life is going to be, how your life is going to be unfolding, that is going to be your intuition. 
angels to me are the music notes of our overarching consciousness. And those music notes, whole, total, and complete, have energetic footprints or energetic fingerprints. They have a very special vibrational code. Every single one is unique. So when they come and visit, we know it's them because we are aware of that vibrational note. So we know if it was a loved one, we know who it was. It's not in the shape of a person because really when we're interacting with each other, you and I or whoever you're interacting with, you're learning that vibrational footprint, that vibrational fingerprint of that person, that essence of that person. So it really has nothing to do with this body because when that essence comes back in, whether it's through a smell or a flickering of light or whatever it is, or in a dream, you'll recognize them from that energetic code. So that's what I think the angels are. Sometimes people associate angels with death because we see or feel or are aware of these music notes, our loved ones around us at the time of death. And we see this in hospice communities. And um, when people are on their deathbeds, they say, oh, my grandpa Jack came to see me or uh, my aunt or my mom or my dog. They came to see me. They're in the room right now with me. And that's not because they're seeing the shape of that. They're recognizing that energetic code. To me, those are angels. And they're usually associated with death because that's when that veiling system of our brain starts uh, faltering, that veil becomes a lot thinner. And so we start getting more ethereal information that previously might not have been relevant, but now is becoming more and more relevant as the body is ceasing. Okay. But you are talking about our loved ones who have crossed over, who are now beyond the veil. So are you saying that when we cross over, we become an angel, that soul particle becomes an angel, so angels are not separate to those souls? Right. Okay. Because you're because you're a music note in the overarching symphony. So you're a beautiful music note in that overarching symphony. And we can be visited by people that we didn't even know here on earth. We could be visited by other musical notes that are formerly not relevant to this life experience, but become more relevant as the brain begins to falter its veiling system. So once that veiling system starts weakening or shaking a little bit, upon our death or at the time of our death, we're going to be able to see or experience or recognize, I'll say recognize, more ethereal information coming in. And that's including angels that we wouldn't have known here on earth. So maybe not even someone in our family, maybe someone from a totally different planet or a totally different universal plane. But we recognize that spiritual code because it's part of that overarching symphony. Um, I believe in beings that live on other planets. So do I think that we had alien type creatures here on earth at some point? I absolutely do. Do I think that we have alien type creatures that might not be total humanoids here on this planet? I absolutely do. Uh, so there's, there's a lot of mystery out there that is spectacular and our brain just works with what it's got. But angels to me are the music notes of the overarching symphony. Just like any other energy or particle of, of the consciousness. Absolutely. Because mm -hmm. they there's no... So a lot of people think that there's levels on the other side of the veil, like a school. Mm -hmm. Like we have to go and learn. And this is a learning plane. And then when we die, we go to another learning plane. We go to these hierarchies. And when you get to a certain level, then you can become an angel. Well, we're becoming... We're becoming, <laughs> that's all I can say, right now, this beautiful resonance, this harmony, and it's whole and it's total and complete. And there's nothing else that we need to do upon this death, the death of this body, besides be part of that overarching symphony. So you think of the angelic choir, people that have had near-death experiences come back and say, oh my gosh, there was this angelic choir. Well, that choir, we're going to be part of that choir. And that's spectacular to mm -hmm. me. So is there some separation or delineation between someone that was alive as a human and died and goes to the other side of the veil? And are they angel or not an angel? 
everybody to me is an angel. That's an interesting concept. So what about the notion, which is probably the most popular belief of angels being spiritual beings, messengers from God, who have particular characteristics and particular powers that we can connect with and receive or utilize in our life. Like, for example, a lot of people call upon Archangel Michael for protection or call upon Archangel Metatron for some intellectual insights. And this is a very common concept. Of course, it came from traditional religions, but because it is so strongly entrenched in our psyche, I would say, in our culture, in our spirituality. Why do you think this has happened? What's your view on that? Power. I would say that the development of religion is the development of power. Okay. Just like a monarchy, just like other forms of government, the religious sect came in and said, okay, we need to have power too. And we need to take away people's power. You have all of that magic within you, okay? You could not have been created had you not been magical. You are a miracle. Every single thing on this planet is a miracle. By saying that you have to have a middleman in order to protect you, well, your body is developed for protection. You are an electromagnetic organism. That is the most powerful thing that there is in the universe. It's more powerful than nuclear forces. It's more powerful than gravity. You are an electromagnetic organism. Part of that is an electrical field that is around you naturally. It's not going away. You are protected. You have access to knowledge. You have access to knowledge that is going to be relevant for your life experience. So you can use your intuition and just know something. And then after you just know something, that something might just go away and you don't need it again. But you're like, how did I know that? How did I learn that? You know, I must have been given something fantastic from the other side of the veil. An angel must have kissed me or blessed me with some great knowledge. By putting a middleman in there, that takes your autonomy away. By putting a middleman in there, that takes your power away. That makes you feel inferior. In order to ask an angel for the protection that your body naturally makes, you are believing that you are inferior and not worthy of protecting yourself. But you are. You are magnificent. Your body is built magnificently. Even if it's ailing, even if you're in a wheelchair, you're still magnificent because that's how your body is created. You're created with point and purpose, and you are brought down here with everything that this body needs in order to survive. When it runs out of the things that it needs to survive, this body is going to cease. So you are the angel. Okay. I like that. But what about people who claim that they? are working with particular angels, and more importantly, that they have received specific help from some specific angels who are not their deceased relatives or other people on the other side, but they are specifically those spiritual beings with certain powers, which we don't have. And they claim that, yes, they work with them, they communicate with them, and they have received all those, if you like, benefits or support or help from them. Do they just imagine things? They are working with their very patient <laughs> overarching consciousness that says, <laughs> all right, if you need to call me Michael, you can call me Michael. <laughs> there aren't names on the other side of the veil. <laughs> that Names are for us here on earth in order to communicate with each other. But our consciousness is so patient and so <laughs> loving and so accepting. But that's who they're working with. Okay. They're working, they are themselves. They're tapping into their own intuition. Mm, I like that concept. I do. So, there you go. A brief answer to the question, who or what are angels? Or at least some food for thought. Thank you, Maren. We'll speak again in the next edition of Quantum Chat. Thank you, Anna. I really loved this. I love talking about angels. and My heart just feels super full. Thank you for sharing this with me. If you guys enjoyed our conversation, please let us know or give us your feedback. You can do so by going to Anna's website, 
and that's linked below. And on her website is her email address, or you can leave a review right there, I think. Right, Anna? (laughs) All right. Thank you, guys. We'll talk to you later. Thank you so much. Well, this is the final episode of this experimental mini-series, Quantum Chat, microdosing spiritual insights in a food-for-thought style. We had a lot of fun with Marin doing it together. There was always something new and unexpected in our conversations. And yes, the biggest challenge was the limited time we had to address often existential questions. <laughs> we hope that you enjoyed Quantum Chat and that it has offered you some meaningful food for thought about the questions it has posed, yet not necessarily answered. You can access all Quantum Chat episodes together for binge listening, bulk downloads, and one link sharing on my podcast website at quantumlivingpodcast.com under episodes in its own category, Quantum Chat. Thank you so much for listening. I hope to connect with you on the next regular episode of Quantum Living, which moves into Season 6 from January, with some changes on the horizon, so stay tuned. That's all for today, folks. I hope you enjoyed this episode, and if you really loved it, Please post a review on Apple Podcasts or Spotify to encourage others to listen to it. For the show notes, guest and podcast info, reviews, comments, and much more, please visit quantumlivingpodcast.com. And if you'd like to dive deeper into quantum living and explore how you could work with me, please contact me, and I'd be delighted to help and support you on your quantum journey. I am your host, Anna Anderson. I look forward to connecting with you in the next episode of Quantum Living. Until then, keep your vibrations high and be well.